Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to the final turn of Cataclysm, a second world war. I am Bridger, and we are jumping into this action. It is down to the wire here. Can the Americans push back the Soviet threat in time to make up the victory point deficit? It's going to be a real close one here. The Soviets have a huge advantage right now. We'll see if they can hold on to it. Uh, there is one thing that we missed on the previous thing is we forgot to collapse the Italians. It happened right at the end of the last uh, the, the last turn. So I don't think we screwed anything up, really. They aren't going to surrender. There's no zero chance of surrender. When a power collapses, determine the surrender threshold. Plus one for each neutral opposing your enemy cube in its home areas. There's none of those in their home areas. Plus one if their victory total is zero or less. It's not. And their power's commitment is not exhaustion. So... They don't surrender, they only collapse. So, each enemy power gains a flag, and that means that we need to distribute an extra flag, and this could have screwed things up, but whatever. Um, also, I incorrectly uh, indicated in that uh, previous video that your home front markers don't count as markers that, that count as yours to continue the turn. That is also incorrect, so uh, yeah, good to know. Okay, the Soviets have an extra flag from the previous turn, uh, and, and that is, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay. The Americans and the British also have an extra flag from the previous turn. Let's just pretend that's the way that things went. Okay. So now we move on to stability test pending or canceled, set power stability to wavering. So the Italians come back to wavering. If powers commitment is mobilization, they go to exhaustion, which is exactly what happens. The Italians are now stuck at exhaustion. They have they have exactly the same number of units they had before because they never went to total war. Remove all powers cubed from failed political action boxes. No problem. Uh, remove return powers reserved at status card. We need to worry about that. Effectiveness check for each area containing powers cubes, but none of its land units. I guess that includes Rome, doesn't it? Each area containing powers cubes, but none of its land units. Yeah, I guess that does. All right, so let's do for each of these. Now, effectiveness checks for Italy, not great. Uh, nope, it loses the Italian uh, Roman cube. Yugoslavia, no. Austria, no. Albania, no. Iraq, no. Jordan, no. Wow, they lost every single cube they had. That was the only chance the fascists had as victory, was holding onto the Italian cubes and holding onto the Japanese cubes and maybe getting a few more Japanese cubes. They probably could have picked up a few more cubes in China fairly easily because those empties, are, those are areas are empty. Maybe they could have grabbed Mongolia. Uh, but at this point, it looks like they're definitely out of the running. So that having all happened, if a powers commit, uh, powers allies must conduct stability tests, then it power uh, breaks its alliance. So the Japanese had a stability test that they missed, in fact. So let's take care of that here. 2d6 for Japan, and they failed it. So they would have been even lower on this to unstable. And then we go to the power offers an armistice, and the allies absolutely take it, because if they take it at the end of last turn, it means that they would be able to go trace their resources from the Pacific through the Mediterranean. They would get them for this turn. So uh, that having been said, we can now take Italy out of the war. Uh, now, do the Soviets take it? Because the Soviets are also at war with them. Um, and, hmm. I think the Soviets take it I guess it doesn't really matter except that if they take it then that means when the Italians try to attack them it'll give the Soviets flags right that's the that's the only difference is if the Italians are going to attack then the Soviets get flags if they take the armistice if they don't take the armistice I mean is the question do the Soviets want to collapse Italy themselves. I think they could, but I don't think they're going to want to. So yeah, we're just going to take it. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but the, we'll see if it turns into a problem later. Okay, so Germany's off of this chart too, isn't it? All right, so now we're ready to go, and the democracies are already at war with the communists. I forgot that that was the case, but that's how the communists got into Berlin and the Ruhr. I was sitting here thinking I need to get the flags for the allies, but okay, so we finished... All of those things, Il Duce now doesn't count anymore. So the Italians might be able to limp together one or two. Oh, the other thing the Soviets would want to give the armistice to Italy. So Italy is now no longer at war. Italy doesn't get war uh, offensives, which, 
you know, it was good for the Soviets. They don't want them messing around in their backyard. So anyway, we now go to the production step of the next turn. And the Italians are the lowest on the effectiveness track, so they are going to start first. What are they going to get? Well, they get one resource, which they can use on an offensive. That's the only thing they want to use it on right now. They, they don't. If they're going to get any chance of any chance of victory, maybe the Soviets and the Americans kill each other so much that they have fewer victory points than the fascists. Maybe, but right now the fascists are at zero. If Japan is at six and the Italians are at zero, and the Germans are at negative six, the fascists are at zero. So, now we have to see if Japan and Italy can grab a few more VP at the end here, and maybe the Americans drive the Soviets out and drive their score to zero. Eh, it could be close. All right. So, Il Duce no longer counts. Uh, we're at gain flag step. Let's do uh, that first before we do anything else. Il Duce doesn't do anything special, but we'll give it to him anyway. And the Americans and the British can barely gain flags because they have some left over from the previous turn because I screwed that up. Anyway, we're just going to continue on as if it was normal. Now we go on to uh, actual Italy did their production. Now we go to the Soviet Union. Soviet Union has so much production. Oh my God. One, two, three, four, five, because they have the German areas there. Five uh, war offensives. Yeah. Five war offensives because of the two German areas. That's an insane number. That's more than the Americans. That's as much as the Americans and the British combined. Um, and then they get to spend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven resources, which, yes, they are able to collect. Just barely, because they had one of their offensives in the holding box from the previous turn, and you can only collect as many resources as you have offensive markers in your available markers box at the start of the turn. So, uh, with these seven resources, they're immediately going to spend two on offensives just so they have all their offensives in there. They've got, then they've got five left. Uh, one, two. I think then we're just going to go three, four, five, right? I mean, we could do this armor upgrade as well but we've got a decent amount of armor on the board there's not much that we need to upgrade and i'd rather just get more things coming out so that's the soviets that's everything they've spent everything they can wait a minute no they have more because you get <laughs> i'm not even multiplying by three they have nothing else to buy they buy everything they have nothing else. They, they have huge amounts of wasted resources because of that. Okay, well, that's that. Now we go on to the Japanese, who have managed to get the third resource for the first time in any game I've ever played. The Japanese this is the most successful that they've been, where they've gotten Java resource. Unfortunately, they were supposed to get that three turns ago, <laughs> and they did not. Uh, so... Yeah, they're supposed to have that for the last two turns. But they do get one war offensive. Let's give them that off the bat. Then they get three resources. Do they want to do any builds with it, or do they just want to take three offensives? I think they need the offensives and these things they can maybe pull up later. So we're just going to take one, two, three. That's the best they can do. It's not great, but it'll have to do. Next, we go to the Americans and the British. Now, the Americans are going to not send anything over to the British. I thought that they were going to do some um, some Lindley's, but I think because the British got that um, armistice with the Italians, they can now collect all four of their resources, which is decent. So the British are going to get their one uh, and one, two, three, four, five. Do they have another one in here? Yes, they have another one in there. They have the six. Okay, but they can collect all four. So there's one war offensive. Then they're going to get four more resources. And I think one of them is unfortunately going to be an air unit. I want that air unit down in Egypt so it can take back Jordan and Iraq for free and maybe Syria as well. Um, that would allow them to benefit... Uh, from some victory points down there. And that's what the Allies need. They just need victory points. Now, if they can get them from the Soviets, that's the ideal situation. But uh, that's who they're really fighting now. But I think they need more offensives than anything else. So with four, let's spend three on this. One air and one armor upgrade, and then one, two, three offensives. That's, that's the best they can do. Now we go to the Americans, who are going to take back the uh, aid marker in Spain, and they're going to take back 
the aid marker in China because they need to use all 10 markers, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do, but let's see. Uh, first and foremost, they're going to use uh, one of their, they're going to get their four uh, war offensives, right? That's the first thing. One, two, three, four. They've got six left. Uh, but one, uh, then they've got six resources to spend, so they can immediately take all six. But I think, actually, do we want that A-bomb? I think we want that A-bomb. So we need to do one point on the A-bomb, and let's do two, three on the... Uh, and actually, when the A-bomb comes out of the cup, that's when it goes on the map. So if we leave it in the cup, it could never come out. And that could be a problem. Wait a minute. I've got it. I've got it. So here's what we do. We don't buy the A-bomb or the armor upgrade. No. We buy with the six resources that we have left. No, I'm sorry. We have we we didn't send any to the British. We've got seven, seven resources. So we collect one, two, three, four, five, six war offensives. With the seventh, we can build three things. So we are going to do the armor upgrade and then we're going to do, hmm, we could do the A-bomb, but man, I want to do that as part of an offensive so that we can have it come out later. And then I guess we're going to do infantry because we have no more air units to build. We have all the air that we can possibly build is, is ready. It's done. It's good to go. But I guess we'll do the A-bomb and we'll have that come out first. I hate doing it that way, but that's the way it's got to be. All right. So next... We do, well, so that's done with production. Everybody's produced. So now we go straight to uh, resources going into reserve uh, or items going into reserve. So Italy is going to reserve, I don't know, it'll do say so that they can go up. What does it matter? I think they have to reserve the offensive because if they don't pull the offensive, then they can't get any points. So they have to pull the offensive and just hope. Um, and next, uh, the... Their stuff goes in the cup. Next, we go to the Soviet Union, who has about a gajillion things they could possibly do. But probably their most pressing issue is pushing the Americans off of Denmark. So, And because they have, right now, the advantage with the tank superiority here, they are absolutely going to put an offensive in reserve. So that is what they're doing. Next up, we've got Japan. Japan is going to probably put an offensive in reserve too, because right now they have the advantage they could take out the Philippines, um, which is currently out of supply thanks to uh, the situation here. Or is it? No. The Marshall Islands got taken over by the Americans. It's not, it's not out of supply anymore. So that's back in supply. Do they need anything else that's in there? I think they need their flag, actually. That has to be first so that they can get their stability up. Next, we've got the British and the Americans have to choose. I think the Americans are definitely going to want to put the armor upgrade in reserve so that they can build it more than once in the near future. And then all of their stuff goes in the cup. All the Japanese stuff goes in the cup. We already got the Italian stuff. The British have that plane that needs to come out before they can do anything down in the uh in the egypt area and maybe that's not where they want to do their their stuff but no matter where they fight they only get one if they take back f pieces of france that's still only one vp each so if the americans can just force their way into the ruhr then the british can also land there and do some fighting against the soviets but it looks like that's going to be mostly an american thing so let's put the british air unit in reserve and the, with the hope that we can put that out before they draw an offensive. All right, everything else goes in the cup. This is crazy and probably negatively affected by my missing the, the, the Italian collapse last time. But let's see what happens. So the first thing that happens is the Americans interrupt with their, uh, with their armor upgrade because that way or they're much less likely to lose Denmark. So they're going to flip over their unit in Denmark. They still don't have armor superiority there, but at least they have three hit points instead of two. Uh, so after that, the Japanese definitely interrupt just to make sure they will attempt to get their propaganda going, and it fails. That means that they are almost certainly going to collapse um, on the next home front check. 
That's very bad news for them. The fascists now have zero hope. Let's see what happens next. Next, the British are going to interrupt with their air unit and put it into Egypt. And last but not least, the Soviets are definitely going to interrupt and attack Denmark with armor superiority and a plus two. 2d6 plus two for the air attack into Denmark. Oh, that's very, very bad for the Americans. That is a nine. The Americans roll 2d6 in response with their plane, and it's a six. So they get to retreat it instead of losing it outright. That was going to look really good, but a nine to a six is still only a one loss for the plane, so they can retreat. Now, next, we've got the actual battle in Denmark, which is 3d6 plus 2 versus 1d6. Here it is. Another double 6! That's another 9 versus a 4. Two losses. So they, in order to not lose Denmark, ooh, um, they would have to take that loss and then take another loss. And they have nowhere to retreat anyway. So that's that's fine. It is what it is. And that leaves, at least the Soviets didn't, uh, didn't get out there. Okay. So now the Americans would like to... Get, I mean, the, the Allies need to get something in North Sea. If they can get something in North Sea, it would allow the British to do some invasions in Paris and hit the, the Soviets from another side with their offensives. But the Italians might as well interrupt. They're not going to get a better chance... And they might as well attack somewhere. Uh, where will that be? Well, the only shot they have is a plus one against, like, Austria or Provence. But I think, yeah, I was going to say Yugoslavia, but that's close to the Soviets. They want to take something that nobody else would take. Just because we're, we're pretending they're still playing to win, they're going to take. They're going to attack Provence. That's the only option they have uh, if they want to get the plus one. Actually, that's the only option they have, period. They can't move and then attack. So they're interrupting, and they're going to do 2d6 plus 1. Uh, sorry, 3d6 plus 1 against Provence. It's a 7. Against the defending, 1d6 plus 1 is a 2. So the Italians take it. They're back on the board, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, Italy. They now have a victory point level of 1, along with the fascists. Okay, now we go to the cup and see how fate treats us. This, the British, I think are going to stick with that original plan, unless we can build something with this that will help them out. Like infantry. Like, they don't have any infantry in the cup, so maybe we do two infantry builds. Put one in reserve and one in the cup, just so they can do something up here. Right? They do actually have the ability to hit Indochina right now. That's also a possibility. But maybe we should wait until the Americans can send some backup, because that would, again, give them more victory points. And But I think they want to use it against the Soviets, if they at all can. That's what they want to do. Okay, so now we pull the next thing out of the cup. And it is Il Duce. I guess he's just going to try to prevent the Italians from collapsing any further. Because it's certainly possible with a minus two that they do. So he's going to roll propaganda at a 1d6 and it's successful. Remember, he rolls at 1d6 because once the Italians collapse, he's no longer special. Next, the British interrupt and place an army unit in London. Where do they put it in Denmark? Let's get Denmark beefed up again. I think we just have to make sure that we have the ability to defend that against Soviet aggression. The Italian home front comes out right quick. That's a good luck for the Italians. They roll 1d6, and they go down two levels thanks to the Italian home front. Um, and I don't know... Oh, you know what? Actually, Provence would have been a provocation, but it's not in anybody's interest now that I look at it. Ha 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 ha! Look at that! Yeah. Nobody has interest in Provence. Okay. Um, but okay, so the Italians, they could move stuff around, but why? I guess the only thing they'd want to do is move these guys down to Libya to make sure they're not an easy target for aggression down there. No, they keep them in Lombardy. Let's, let's, let's not be, let's not get cute. Okay, next out of the cup is a British offensive. Oh. Again with the, I guess they're going after Jordan. And they're just going to use one offensive. So here's 3d6 versus 1d6. That's a 5. That's a 2. It's successful. The British get a cube. And they're going to move in as well. Now, is Jordan is restricted. So they need to take Syria. Oh, no. They, they can go into Iraq and, and Syria from Jordan. Because that's fine. They can trace into there. Okay. Uh, and now the British gain a victory point. The democracies gain a victory point. And now we're going to use the next one into Syria. So 3d6 to 1d6 again. It's a 4 to a 1. That's another success. 
So the British gain an extra cube. And I think they're going to base themselves in Syria. Yeah. And because Syria doesn't have a restriction, so we could take advantage of that later. The democracies gain victory points again. Because now the British have one, two, three, four. But are they at minus one somewhere? Should they be at four? No, I, don't, I think they were down Egypt, but they got it back now. So um, they're at four VP. And probably that means the Allies are actually at zero. And we'll keep track of that again throughout the turn. We'll keep updating it. Uh, okay, and now the last one, they're going to try to take Iraq. And that is another three to one. Uh-oh, only a four, four to a six. They have to retreat back into Syria. So that did pick up two VP for them. Okay, actually, so everything does look to be accurate. Three for the Americans, four for the British. And that means that it's, uh, and with negative eight for the French, that makes democracies at minus one. Communists are at 10. Jeez, that's crazy. Okay, next out of the cup, we have an American fleet. They're immediately going to deploy it from Washington and send it to the North Sea. That gives the British the ability, or the Americans the ability, to invade Paris and get some VPs back that way as needed. Um, they could also put it in the Baltic Sea or something later, but we don't need it over here anymore. We've got tons of power in the in the Pacific, and the Americans could crush that if they need to. The A-bomb comes out. That means it goes to Washington. Uh, and now the Americans can perform a strategic air attack that would force the defender to take excessive stability tests, depending on the result. An American flag comes out. They're going to use that for stability. Absolutely. Oh, and they're going to fail quite miserably, actually. So that goes back, and we go to the Soviet home front. This could be bad for them if they start losing some here. So 2d6 minus 2 for the Soviets. That's okay. They only lose one level of, uh, of stability. Now, the, that offensive they used to try to drive out Denmark is now very... Oh, hang on. Did none of their stuff get in the cup for some reason? None of their stuff got in the cup. Damn it. All right, well, now it's all in the cup. But putting that offensive in reserve rather than putting the uh, the flag in reserve was a risky thing because now they have to wait for the cup to give them a flag. But this does let them move stuff around. Do they need to move anything around? They're set up to make more attacks from the Caucasus and from Romania as needed. They're set up over here. I don't think they need to move anything. I think they're definitely fine. So we go back to the cup. It's an American offensive. The Americans are going to pull that... Uh, the American uh, armor back out, I think. And... Da, 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 da. Is that all... Do they need something else? I guess they need another infantry going in the cup. All right. Next out of the cup. It's a crisis. 2d6 in a wartime crisis. It's a 5-2 political crisis, inter-service rivalry. If Japan has a counter in reserve, it goes away. They do not. It does not. So now the Americans are able to trade that up for another armor upgrade in Denmark. Next out of the cup, another crisis. Three, uh, sorry, 6-3 is nationalist. Germany chooses an area without any powers, land unit, and at least one communist or democratic cube. The controlling power performs an effectiveness check. If it fails, remove all cubes and retreat all non-land units from the area. Uh, where would they do that to do the most damage? I think they would do it in Poland. I mean, it's not a huge FU to the Soviets, but it does kind of screw them. Because if the Americans or the British could get something into the Baltic Sea... Uh, yeah, they're going to try for Poland. That means the Soviets have to pass an effectiveness check for Poland, and they don't. Poland is gone. They lose a VP. Just like that. So, now they can still trace their supply through the Baltic Sea, but if the Brits want to do a deployment into the Baltic Sea, that will cut everybody off. So the Soviets are now shaking a little bit here. They're a little worried. Next out of the cup, an American offensive. Well, they're going to do that, uh, some damage here in the Pacific while we're waiting for a British uh, armor to pop out of there, I think. And... Do we really need to? Isn't it a waste here? We need VP as the Americans. That's what we care about. And it's just so too little too late here on the VP. But, yeah, I think we need to fight the Soviets more than anything else. So they're going to get another uh, American armor upgrade going into reserve. And then, what are they going to do? They can shift some stuff around. 
No, they'll use an attack and just attack the Japanese in here. Why don't we do that? So they're going to attack uh, either New Hebrides or this one here. If we attack New Hebrides, this unit can't support because it's not in a naval base. That's only an air base. So yeah, we're attacking New Hebrides. No augmentation because we spent the other two. And that means we have air superiority and we have naval superiority. 3d6 straight up is a 6. 1d6 is a 6. Jesus Christ, it's a tie. And the Americans are forced back. Base capture operation, by the way, obviously. Well, that kind of sucked. They had pretty good advantage there, but they just needed that one augmentation. All right, so that's the Americans. Next, an American offensive. Well, I guess we're going to do a deployment and get this air unit down here. And then do we attack the same thing? Augmented this time? I mean, putting the British in Denmark may have been a mistake, but I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose it. Or do we do what I, my plan... My plan all along was something sneaky. We will put the American air down in Denmark. But then we're going to do an augmented attack into Sweden. I want the Americans to sweep through Finland and threaten Moscow that way. Because the Soviets don't have any defenses there. That's the sneaky way to do it. The Americans have so many offensives they can afford to do this. So they did the deployment to get the air down in Denmark, which can also help in Sweden. And now they're doing the plus one augmentation into Sweden with air support is 3d6. Oh, hang on. That 3d6 was actually an effectiveness check to attack Sweden and it failed. So they lose the military action. They did not, they did not use the third one yet. They're going to use the third one to do the same thing, though. And here's the effectiveness check to try to pass that. And they fail again. Oh, God, that's really unlikely for the Americans, but okay. Next out of the cup, an American air unit. We're going to send that to Norway. That way the Nor this, this force can push through Sweden and Finland, and this force can help stay and defend Denmark. Next, a British flag. They would probably like to use this to get their... Their stability is fine. They're not going to lose it. Let's use this for builds. They're going to try to get some more air units out. 3d6 for maneuver. It's a failure. Everything's a failure here. Wow, the uh, democracies are having a hard time. Next, the Americans still can't interrupt. We get a British offensive. Now, I think the British are going to do a deployment to do exactly what we talked about. They can put their unit here because they have Denmark as a friendly port. And that cuts the Soviet supply pretty effectively. If the Soviets take Czechoslovakia and Hungary, then they're back in supply, or just Poland. Uh, so, but for now, let's put a limited supply marker up here to remind us that they're in limited supply. Now, that was, so that was a deployment for the British. Did they do anything else with it? They could do an augmented attack into Indochina, which has a decent chance of victory. They could also do the, let's do the attack on Iraq again, and then we'll see what we have left to do with that. Uh, the last thing might just be an air unit coming out. So let's do an attack in Iraq. No augmentation. 3d6 versus 1d6. That's a, Jesus, three rolls in a row. I think this thing's rigged. Uh, that's a four, and the defender is a four. So it's a tie. So the defend, oh God, the British lose their army unit. <laughs> Oh, they should have augmented it. Now they have to rebuild it. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to spend their last military action to rebuild the unit they just lost. Ouch. Okay, the Americans still can't interrupt with their armor upgrade. So we go to the next. And it's a, it's a Japanese offensive. I think they're going to use this on Hebe. Because they're just looking for VPs. They're looking for as many VPs as they can possibly get. Um, actually, let's do Mongolia first. Let's hit Mongolia up. Um... Oh, it's a dangerous game. Because I'm concerned that if we take Hebei and we want to take Jiangsu, and then we have to pop back up here. Let's do one military action into Hebei. This is uh, 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1 because it's open country. So 3d6, oh boy, 1d6 minus 1. 
Well, okay, they're forced back. They're going to attack again. 3d6. That's a 7. 1d6 minus 1 is an automatic success. Okay. So the, so the, so now they're here. I'm a little concerned about leaving Manchuria open. The plan was to take Hebei, take Jiangsu, and then redeploy back to Manchuria. But we're just going to have to hope the Soviets don't get antsy and try to take Manchuria. That's what we're going to have to hope. It's, it's a plus one. It's probably not in their interest to do so. The fascists are already defeated. They're not going to care. Last action into Jiangsu. That's 3d6, 6 versus 4 minus 1. So the, the Japanese picked that up as well. So that's two more VPs for the Japanese, which means two more VPs for the fascists. They're now tied with the Americans. All right. They're done. That means the Americans can interrupt with their uh, tank upgrade which is going to go to Norway. And it's not useful up here except to absorb losses and still have, you know, uh, good stuff. All right, so the tank upgrade is going away. Next we go to the cup. And it's a Soviet air. Now, they saw the Americans trying to go into Sweden twice, and they're getting a little bit antsy. So they don't need the air at the front line. They don't need the air anywhere else. So they're going to be smart and go to Leningrad with that. And next, the British can put their unit down into Syria again. And we go back to the cup. Ah, another British infantry, huh? Well, we're going to put that in London, I guess, because we still can't get it any further in, unfortunately. That's the best we can do. Next out of the cup, Japanese home front. This could collapse the Japanese right now and maybe cause... It won't cause them to surrender, however, because they're not at exhaustion. 2d6 minus 2 is a stability loss, and they collapse. I'm just going to burn through this and pause the game. One second. All right, so the J Japanese actually only lost one cube, the Jiangsu cube, uh, and the Soviets decided not to uh, accept the armistice from Japan because they want the option of attacking and getting more victory points over here if necessary. And the Americans and the British actually did accept the armistice from Japan because at this point, again, it's the final turn. We're just looking to get some VPs. If the Americans were closer to Japan, that might be an easy place to get two VPs for collapsing it. Um, but... They're not that close. They need to get their navy all the way over to Okinawa to, and, and uh, force the enemy out of there and then invade Japan. It's just not as easy as using all of its stuff to fight the, the Soviets, who are the real person they want to take VPs away from. That's where they care about getting VPs. So they're not going to want to fight here. Now that they have this armistice, the British can take this unit back and the Americans can take their air and redeploy it uh, to the other theater. So, And even their infantry or their, or their tank here. So that's going to be the plan here. Uh, and the Japanese home front came in, and the Japanese are redistributing their stuff. Now that they uh, are no longer at war with the Americans, by the way, the home front's what collapsed them, so that's why the, the, the uh, actual redeployment comes afterwards. So they're going to redeploy their infantry uh, and, and other units here around in a position where they can actually maybe get some VPs. Uh, you know what? Actually, they might try to grab... Siam, because there's nobody defending that. Yeah, they could also get that, but Siam's slightly easier, so we'll go after Siam, why not? All right, so that's what they did. They also gave some flags to the Americans, but now we have to figure out what's going on next. I think we're going to get an interruption with the British, who will interrupt and try to attempt maneuvers. They got it. They're going to use. They're going to use that to try to go into Iraq again. So three d six versus one d six. Here we go. That's a six. That's a one. So they finally got it. And that is democracies at zero VP. Everybody, huzzah! Good job. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, the British are carrying the day here, and they spent their flag. So now the Americans can't interrupt, so we go to the cup. It's a Japanese offensive, and they're just going to continue trying to get some VPs in China, I guess. They don't have any place better. So they're going to attack Jiangsu, and they're going to do it again with just 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1. Oh boy, there are some really low rolls this game. Yeah, that is a 2 to a 4, so the Japanese lose their tank army. you got to be kidding me. Next, they go after Jiangsu again, this time augmented with a plus one. Uh, that's a six versus a five, since they don't have the plus one anymore. So they just barely 
or they don't have the uh, arm superiority anymore. So they just barely picked up one more VP and replaced the one they just lost. Now that their offensive is over, the Americans interrupt with a flag, and they are probably going to attempt maneuvers as well. I think they're going to attempt maneuvers to go into Sweden. Let's see. Uh, they, by the way, oh, I'm sorry, no, their flag is going to be used for stability. I don't want to miss that. Uh, so stability, 3D6, and they got the plus one from the propaganda, so they're good. Their stability is back up and strong. They're not going to lose the game that way. Save with the British. So, next out of the cup, and another American flag. This time they are attempting maneuvers to try to grab Sweden. That is a successful military action. Now that they declare the operation against Sweden, they have to ask Congress and make sure it's okay to go after a non-belligerent neutral. Congress says no. Damn, it's a waste. Complete waste. Next out of the cup, an American offensive. Ooh, I think they're going to do the offensive against the Ruhr and say, screw it, our plus two is better than your stupid armor superiority. Yeah, they're going to try it with the British here. And the air battle. Oh, plus the, we know that the Soviets are in limited supply, so that's a good advantage there too. So the air battle is 2d6 plus two versus 2d6. Here's the Americans is at five to five. They both lose a oops we both lose one but the soviets wind up with superiority that sucks i should have put the other air unit in denmark that was foolish so foolish of me all right so um next we go to the land battle and the, the americans are rolling 1d6 plus 2 and the Soviets are rolling 3d6 minus 1. I don't know how you compute those odds, but here we go. 3, 1d6 plus 2, that's a 4. And they're rolling 3d6 minus 1 is a 5. Well, damn it. That was not supposed to go that way, but okay. So that happened. Next out of the cup, Soviet flag. They're going to hit their stability up right now because they, if they surrender then they lose because they lose all their cubes uh but if they collapse they may also lose so 2d6 3d6 sorry for propaganda but it's minus one and it's a failure they get one in the propaganda box it's minus one remember because of their current posture of military reforms next out of the cup a fortress well they're going to put that in moscow i think next out of the cup a soviet offensive which they are going to use on denmark if they can knock the americans out of here it would be good news uh, so here we go. Um, fully augmented. Picking up the extra victory point in Denmark would be good. And it would cut off the British uh, naval unit here. Oh, wait a minute. No. They need to worry about Poland. I'm sorry. They don't want to go to Denmark. They want to hit Poland from Romania. And they're going to do it with no augmentation. It should be fine. Three. We've got two more if we need it. 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1. That's a 6 to a 4. So they get their cube back in Poland. We don't have to worry about tracing supply through the Baltic anymore, so that limited supply marker's gone. They retreat back to Poland, and now they're going to hit, or to Romania, now they're going to hit Hungary with their other, they're just looking for more cubes here. Even if they lose some of Germany, they just need cubes. That's all they care about. So here's Hungary, uh, not augmented, uh, 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1, just barely, they've got it. There's yet another cube for them. And that brings them to 11. And the last one, they're just going to go after Bulgaria. Why not? 3d6 versus 1d6 plus 1. Oh, they lost their armor. No. Uh, yeah, it was a tie. They lost their armor. 6 to 6. Okay. Well, sucks to be Russians there. Japanese, I guess, are going to attack Hubei. Yeah. They're going in. There's no aid there. So they are going to get 3d6 against... 2d6. Uh, oh, they are augmenting with a plus 1. Yeah, plus 1. Okay, so that gives them a 6 versus 2d6. A 5, just barely. Okay, but the Chai Coms actually escaped to Guangdong. The Fascists pick up one more VP. They're still 3 above the Americans. Alright, and next out of the cup is an American offensive. Uh... Jesus, this is awful. I think they need to pick up the easy VPs where it is. Two, uh, two for an invasion of Paris. We just need to get two Americans together. Uh, we've got no air support. Uh, you know what? We're going to do a deployment with the American with the air before we do the invasion. Okay. So now the air is able to support 
as part of the invasion. We have no augmentations. We do have armor superiority, however. 3d6 versus 1d6 plus uh, 1, but then minus 1 because of the armor superiority. So 3d6 to 1d6. 6 to 4 is a success. The Americans pick up 2 VP by gaining Paris. And unfortunately, that doesn't give them flags or anything. That just is what it is. So now they're done. The offensive is gone. We go to a British air, strategic air. Ah. That's the only air unit they have on the board, so I guess that's where it's going. Next out of the cup, a Soviet offensive. Now they can hit Denmark again that we pulled the air away. Very bad idea there. Uh, a little bit. So here it is. 3d6 plus 2 versus 1d6 in Denmark. Yeah, that is 8 to 5, which is only one loss. We're going to take the loss on the American and hope that the British can get their unit over there so they can act with uh, uniformity. All right. Next is a crisis. The third crisis is a 5 2 political crisis, inter service rivalry. No, doesn't affect Japan because they have nothing in reserve. Next, a Soviet infantry. Where are they going to put that? I guess they could put it down in Romania, now that they lost the armor down there. Next out of the cup, American home front. 3d6 minus 2 is a 4. They lose 1 stability level. And now they can redeploy, which is something they were thinking about doing. Uh, they can redeploy this armor all the way over to Paris. And this infantry can redeploy to Denmark. Kind of wish I'd taken the British loss there now, but okay. Uh, they can also redeploy all this air. All the air can get redeployed, and we can put an air in Denmark, and we can put another air in Denmark. And this is all coming through the Mediterranean, by the way. Otherwise, it would have to stop in the delay box in the United States, but because the Brits have the Suez Canal, we're able to get the stuff over real quick on naval moves. Uh, and we can put another air down here in Paris. So now we've got air, air as far as the eye can see. Oh, we've got a strategic air here, which is also important if we want to use that all-important A-bomb. Where to put that? I think I'm going to put it in Denmark. And where to put this other American air? I guess leave it in London for now, right? Or put it in Norway. That way it can support if one of these things gets destroyed. Okay, that's it. Um, the American home front, I think, is complete. They don't need to move anything else. Because the Japanese could still attack with a sneak attack, but they've used pretty much all of their offensives, and they're not really in a position to do so. This up here as well. And do what with it? I don't even know. You know, we could put this in the Barren Sea and then do an extended invasion to Archangel if we really wanted to. Bring another uh, naval unit, do the same exact thing. Yeah. Why the hell not? Let's keep our options open. <laughs> Let's keep our options open. All right, next out of the cup. A Soviet flag. Stability! Stability! Please! Oh, they barely did not get it. It's still, it's plus one, minus one, so it's straight up. They've now got two cubes in propaganda. All right, that flag's gone. The stability might be the way the Americans do this. A Soviet offensive. They still have armor superiority. They're going to hit Denmark again. So with a plus two, 2d6 plus two for them is a six, 2d6 for the American defenders is a six. Six to six. The Americans and the Soviets both lose their air. That's really bad news for the Soviets. Now they don't have anything that can stop the American uh, strategic bombing. But the Americans just lost their strategic bomber, so I guess that would do it. All right, now the ground campaign, however, is 2d6 plus 2 versus 2d6. Uh, thanks to the air superiority canceling out the armor superiority. Here it is, 2d6 plus 2. Uh-oh, that's a 3. 2d6 for the Americans is a two. It's still a victory. Holy shit. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that We're going to kill the American off there, I guess. And we'll put a British over there as soon as the British get the opportunity. Uh, Soviet fortress. Hmm. 
We've got one in Moscow. I think we put this one in Poland. Just because if the Americans do take Germany, this will help bulwark them against driving through to Belarus. I think that's pretty valuable. Yep, okay. Next out of the cup, a British flag. Uh, they've got plenty of stability, so they're going to try for a maneuver again. Uh, they got Iraq last time, but this is just going to be a deployment to get their unit over to Denmark and probably bring the air unit up if need. No, they don't need it up there, actually. So, yeah, deployment. Let's attempt maneuvers. Successful. Good. The air unit can come up and be in Norway, and the army's going over to Denmark. I'm just trying to see if it makes sense. You know what? It can't be in the Baltic Sea because that won't be able to support anything. Yeah, we'll keep it in Norway. Because I don't think they're going to make any more headroom down here in Syria. Attacking Turkey and Persia, that's a risky thing. Because remember, if you try to make those attacks against neutrals, then you could. You have a 30% chance with the British of losing the vote in Parliament and not being allowed to invade the neutrals. And I don't know if that's the best place to spend their attacks anyway. So, next out of the cup, a Japanese offensive. Well, they basically got all the things they can get. They could try Guangdong. Actually, Siam sits, looks like it's slightly easier for them. So they're going to attack Siam. It's going to take a VP away from the Americans, actually, but the Americans don't have it um, garrisoned. So it's certainly legal to attack it that way. Oh, the British should have moved theirs in, but yeah, the British should have moved theirs in. Yeah, then they would have been cut off in Burma if the Japanese decided to sneak attack. Anyway, they're only going to lose one cube, probably. Here we go, 3d6 plus 2. They're just going to do a full augmentation on it because they, they don't want to mess this up. That's a, that's an 8 versus 1d6 plus 1 is a 2. Okay, so they got it. So one less for the Americans and therefore one less for the democracies. One more for the fascists and therefore one more for Japan who's sitting pretty at 10 VP. They're the only ones still doing okay because the Americans decided to leave them alone. Next out of the cup, an American offensive. Okay. Do we drive through Lorraine? I think driving through Lorraine is probably better than driving through Benelux because Benelux has that neutral army and we have to make some excuse to attack it through Parliament or through uh, Congress in this case as the Americans. So, yeah. Or, yes, one military action is going to be used in Lorraine right now. 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1. Jesus, why is it every time I do the non-augmented attack that's a sure thing? Okay, fine. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> wow, okay. So the Americans take Lorraine, which gives them back one of their VPs that they just lost. And they're going to stack their air in here. And for the last two, they're going to build a strategic air unit and put it in reserve. Next out of the cup. Soviet offensive. Well, the Soviets are going to build an air, put it in reserve, and another air and put it in the cup, and then they're going to do a deployment and bring this air down to the Ruhr. And maybe bring the Japanese air also. Or the Eastern Front air. Far East Front yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to add an extra air to the rear. So, unfortunately, the Americans didn't get the strategic upgrade in time. But the Americans are going to now upgrade some strategic air here. All right, next out of the cup. An American air. Well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> they have... Oh, you know what? The Barents Sea is an illegal occupation for the Americans. So they're, they're just going to stay in Scotland for now. Um... Or Denmark. Let's keep them in Denmark so they can support if the Soviets try to get tricky over here. All right. Uh, an American air. <sighs> I guess it goes into Paris. Or you know what? Let's give the Syrians an option. All right. Next out of the cup. Soviet air. Now they can put this back in the Far East. <laughs> Wow, this just undid all the things that just happened. Next out of the cup, the dramatic moment when the British roll their home front and fail twice. Double double losses on the British home front. But now they can move their stuff around if they want. Um, I don't know if they want. There's really nothing they need to do right now. 
pretty happy with things that the way they are. Forgot to put this over here, and they're gonna keep that in Siam and move this back out. Uh, actually, Indochina is neutral as well. They could they could be in both. Okay, they could be in either and have the same effect. Uh, so the British, do they need to move anything else? Nope, I think they're done. And that means the Soviets are going to put out another air unit somewhere. Probably Silesia, because they realize that that is very important to make, to cover Berlin. Let's put it in Berlin. They need to cover both of those, or the Americans are going to drop the bomb. So, next out of the cup, a Soviet army upgrade. I guess the reserve in Berlin is getting an upgrade there. And uh, next out of the cup is a Soviet infantry. I think they got to put that in Silesia to make sure they cover getting cut off there. Next out of the cup, a Soviet offensive. Wow, okay. Well, they're doing just fine. I think they have to try to attack that American air again. They're going to do a full attack because, again, they have armor superiority. So this is 2d6 plus 2 is a 7 versus the Americans 2d6. Uh, 7 to 4. The Americans would take one loss. And... Hmm... <laughs> they have to take it on the stupid upgraded air. They can't get the A-bomb into play. The Soviets keep blowing up their air, but they're going to leave their air there to make sure that the Soviets don't get air superiority. So now the Soviets are at 2d6 plus 2 versus 1d6. There's a 6 versus a 5, and the British lose only 1, and the Soviets are rebuffed. Next out of the cup, an American offensive is going to do everything that just happened, but it's going to hit the Ruhr hard and hope to do the same thing to the air that just happened to them. So the air is coming in. Everything's coming in. 2d6 plus 2 is a 6 versus a 6, and both sides lose air. The Americans, the fools, how dare they? All right. And now the land combat is 2d6 plus 2 versus 2d6, 8 to six is a loss. Let's see. It's one loss. And they could just retreat. I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to retreat. Because that actually doing that gives the Americans one less target to perform their strategic air operation against. And so that's retreating to, uh, to Berlin because it can cover everything. The Americans will take it. And the Soviets will preserve their armor for continued attack. So, Soviets are down one. And the Americans are up one, and so are the democracies. All right. And they're, of course, occupying it. The other thing that does is it kind of ties up the units in Denmark. But what it does do is it allows an air unit from there to come in and regroup during the regrouping phase. Next out of the cup, civil war resolution. There is not really a civil war. Ah, but the Chinese communists will try to take over, let's say, uh, Yunnan. 2d6, failure. All right. Next out of the cup, Soviet offensive. Well, I think they have to hit the Ruhr with everything they've got again and try to whittle down the American air. 3D, sorry, 2D6 plus 2 is only a 6 versus 2D6 Americans. 6 to 3. Two losses. So they lose one and the other retreats to Denmark. Next, the Soviets have 3D6 plus 2. Oh, that's only a 4. The Americans are rolling 2D6. 6 to 4. The Soviets have to back out. Look at that. All right, that might be the last... Nope, there's probably one more Soviet offensive in there. An American... Uh, an American flag is going to be used for maneuvers in an attempt to build. It's a success. They're going to take an American air and put it in reserve. Next out of the cup. Ooh, a British tank upgrade. Yeah. They're going to put it in Denmark. They actually could invade Prussia or the Baltic states here. And they might very well try for that. Let's find out. Next out of the cup. An American offensive. Well, this is going to be a lot weaker than they'd hoped. They're going to take both their air from Denmark and redeploy them here. Then they're going to take the air from Norway and redeploy it somewhere. 
probably to Denmark. All right. And then they're going to do a plus one augmented attack into Berlin. They got to try. So here's 2d6 plus one is a six versus the 2d6 for the Soviets is a five. So the Soviets don't want to take a loss for no reason. So they're going to retreat to absorb that loss in the air. So the Americans have air superiority. 3d6 plus one versus 2d6. A five to a three is a victory for the Americans. And the Soviets this time don't have anywhere to retreat to except Bavaria, which they do not want to do. So they will take the loss. And that's the first time the Soviets are now on the back foot here in Europe. All right. Next out of the cup. A British offensive. I think that's exactly what they're doing. They are going to invade East Prussia and hopefully redeploy some of the British air back there to cover. And if they're lucky, they can use it to take out some more Soviet cubes, but even better, maybe take Poland and uh, cut everybody off here and maybe get some triumphs in the near future. So uh, they're going to use a plus one augmentation into East Prussia. It's automatically got a plus one on the defender, so that's canceled out. But yeah, so this is 2d6 plus one for the invading British. That's a seven. And the defenders have a 1d plus one for defending against invasion, minus one because the attackers have armor superiority. Uh, so this is 1d straight up, which is a three, so it's not possible, so it is captured. So we'll put that there. The Soviets lose one. The British and the democracies gain one. Hey, the democracies finally caught up to the fascists. For the first time since the very beginning of the game, they are now tied with the fascists. All right, that British attack means the Americans can't interrupt. So now the next out of the cup is a Soviet fortress. Huh. Well, I guess they put that in the Baltic states, don't they? Yep, that seems like, just when the British and the Americans, like, there's just so many Soviet things. They got so much stuff this turn. That does allow the Americans to place an air unit down. But where? Hmm. And man, all they have to do is try to collapse the Soviets if they could do it. It would potentially wipe out, no, actually, it wouldn't wipe out many of their VPs at all, would it? Maybe Bavaria, maybe Hungary. That's not a lot. All right. Uh, I guess the air goes down in Denmark. It's not a great spot, but it is what it is. Next out of the cup, an American offensive. Hit them hard, hit them fast, hit them in Berlin, take away two of their VPs. Here we go. 2d6 plus 2 for the Americans is an 8. 2d6 for the Soviet responders is only 5. So they again have to retreat. One loss absorbed. Now the Americans need to not whiff this roll. 3d6 plus 2 is only a 7 versus only 1d6 for the defenders because of the armor superiority. A 6. Oh my god, come on. The Americans needed that to be a triumph. But no dice. The Soviets simply lose one more level of armor. Okay, next out of the cup. An American tank upgrade. They actually don't have anything to do with this because they lost their infantry earlier. Oh, shit. I guess we put it in reserve. Next out of the cup. By the way, the Americans are running out of offensives here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They only have one more left in the cup. The British only have one, two, three, four, five. They only have one more left in the cup. This is not going to be great for them. This is bad news bears. And it's a Soviet flag coming out. They're going to use it for propaganda to try to get their stability back up. Oh, but they still do it. No, they still don't do it. Because that is a plus two, but a minus one for the uh, for the Soviet posture uh, means that it's only a plus one, and that's not enough. That is insane. Their stability is still on the brink. It's so close. All right. Well, next out of the cup. A Soviet offensive. What the hell do they do with this? They try to get another uh, another point in Berlin because a, a two-point swing right now would bring the democracies up to six and the communists down to seven. That's really close. That's so super close. Oh, you know what? That American air that came out earlier? Let's be smart with that. I forgot we had just captured uh, Prussia, so we're moving that to there. Obviously, obviously. We need the British to be backed up with some of that. So... 
this offensive, yeah, they're going to put an armor upgrade in reserve to try to hold on to Berlin. And they're going to use the other point to do what? Redeploy defensive units to counter the British. That's what they're doing there. In fact, they can also put both of their tanks in Berlin. And what do they put somewhere else? Belarusia, I guess. They now got two tanks, two infantry. I'm just going to top them up here, I guess. Two tanks, two infantry here. The planes will be able to support Poland or Silesia or the, uh, the Berlin area. Yeah, this is, this is problematic on a lot of scales. Okay, the Americans don't want to interrupt with their tank army because it's not useful right now. The Italians, yay! Good job, Italians. Hold on to Libya. You just keep on trucking. The Soviets will use now their armor upgrade to improve Poland. And next out of the cup is the British offensive. Well, that just sucked. The British were hoping to hit Poland and thereby cut off the Soviets that are in here. But now, I mean, what could they do? They could hit the Baltic states and they'd have air superiority and support. Actually, no, they wouldn't because let's be smart. The, the, the Soviets definitely brought over some air to cover all of these eventualities. I don't know what they're going to do. The Baltic States is still their best play because they'd get armor superiority there. They just have to hope for a triumph or something. <sighs> and let's do one augmentation because if they can take the Baltic States, if they get extra lucky, then they can use the final attack into Belarusia and hope. So this is a plus one augmentation. There is air support from the Soviets. So 2d6 plus one. They need a six. They got a six. Then they need the Soviets to whiff on the 2d6. Six to three. That is definitely a whiff. They have to take two losses. So they take one. And then they absorb the other one by retreating. That's So that there we go. That's a good start for the British and American push here. Next. Da, 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 let's think. This is going to be 3d6 plus 1 versus 1d6 plus 1. Here we go. They got the 7. Now are the defenders going to completely whiff it? It's a 4. That's not enough. That is not enough. They needed... Ah, the fortress saved the day. Oh, no. So what that does is one loss, which they'll have to take on the fortress because if they took it by retreating then they'd lose the area so they'll take it on the fortress and the British have to return they have one more military action left and I think they're just going to go back into the Baltic states and hope 2d6 versus 2d6 that's a 4 that's a 2 that is a destruction of the Soviet reserve air force from Poland so that's another good maybe they get a triumph here Maybe they get a triumph here. There's no augmentation, but maybe they roll well. 3d6 plus 0. That's a 5. 1d6. Oh, it's a triumph for the British! Look at that! The triumph means the Soviets have to take a stability test. Now they get 3d6s on these. And they fail it! Oh, no! The British at the last step, they make a final push after knocking down the fortress and being pushed back. They come back strong, and they forced a collapse of the Soviet Union. Now, there's no chance of surrender here for the Soviets, but this is going to send them to exhaustion. Let's do everything in order here. This is going to be important. Every enemy power gains a flag, which means the British and the Americans gain a flag which they could potentially use for more offensives here in the near future. Uh, and the Japanese gain a flag, because why not? Why not give them a flag? 
Stability tests pending are gone. Set penalties by wavering. So unfortunately, they go back up to wavering, so there's not a great chance of knocking that out again. Um, remove all their cubes from the failed political action boxes. <laughs> their propaganda goes away. <laughs> Perform effectiveness checks from ev for everything. So everything that doesn't have a, a land unit. So actually, they're safe in the Polish corridor here, but they do have to check for Bavaria. Oh, and Romania and Hungary now. Okay, so here we go. 2d6, Bavaria, success. Hungary, success. Romania, success. Oh, my God, Mongolia, fail. All right, so the Soviets lose one. Oh, boy. That is not a lot. Now, we also have to lose one for the Baltic states, too, actually. And the British gain one, and the democracies gain one. So now, taking Berlin is how the democracies can win. That is absolutely how they can win. All right. Uh, and that is all of those. Powers, allies must conduct stability. Test the power must offer an armistice to all enemy powers. Japan says sure let's just stop this charade all right um but obviously the americans and british do not accept and uh, i already put them down to uh now they go to exhaustion as well i missed that part earlier uh and that means they actually lose four things but they can lose things on their card first if they want so that to Three, four. Sure. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get rid of the infantry instead of the army upgrade. Okay. So that was the British attack and the successful British capture of the Baltic states. We're getting really close to the end here. Let's make sure we're counting everything correctly. All right. Everything appears to be correct here. The democracies are at five. The communists are at seven. Whew. Oh, boy. Uh, the British are going to interrupt and use their flag here in the hope of doing some more damage. So let's see maneuvers for the British. It's a success. Uh, what are they going to do with it? I think they're going to attack Belarus that doesn't have any air support. So it's not augmented, but they've got air superiority and armor superiority. 3d6 versus 1d6 is a tie, but the Soviets lose the area. That's a stability test for them. So... Uh, the Brits, are they going to stay in Belarusia? It's going to be easy to cut them off. And what was that? That was a 6 to a 6. It was just a tie, so it was not a triumph. But the British also gain a flag by that, by the way. Taking an enemy home area gives them a flag and the ability to interrupt again. So actually, they are going to stay in Belarusia in the hopes that they can take more Soviet areas. Um... They can take Ukraine, Smolensk, or Donetsk Basin without leaving Belarusia while being in supply through the Baltic states. And hope that the Soviets don't have the ability to come back here and punch them in the nose. All right, so that brings the British to eight, the democracies to six, and the communists to six. It's a tie game, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know what happens on a tie. It's, it's crazy. Everything's, everything's crazy. The Soviets now have to survive a stability test, which they do. Okay. The Japanese flag is going to be used on maneuvers. Sure. Why not use it on maneuvers and try for one more uh, one more uh, place here? I guess they're going to hit Guangdong because they always did like those coastal areas. So 3d6 versus 2d6 plus 1. And they're rebuffed. Well, it was good good old college try there, the fascists with four. Not a lot of hope for them. You know what? It, if they could have gotten to five with that, it was going to be six to six to five. That's a pretty damn close game. But now the British can use their flag and interrupt and try for maneuvers again. They got it. They're going to hit the Ukraine. Now, that won't cut off the Soviets, unfortunately, because uh, they can still trace through Romania and up into Poland as far as supply is concerned. Uh, but they're going to attack the Ukraine nonetheless. So the Ukraine has no air support, so it's 3d6 versus 1d6. 6 to 2 is another success for the British and for the democracies, and the communists are now behind. It was looking so good for them, but the British breakthrough in, Pr in Prussia and the Baltic states is what did it for them. Um, 
And now the British gain another flag for taking another home area. You can see how this can chain together once you get into enemy home territory. Uh, it becomes very bad for them and good for you. Fighting over all of these buffer states is very exhausting for both powers, and they can't keep going as easily. Um, all right. Uh, and that is also a stability test for the Soviets. They pass it, no problem. We go back to the cup. It's another British flag. Well, they're going to take another of the <laughs> Soviet home areas, right? We're going to go into the Donitz Basin. You know, if we go into the Donitz Basin and then get lucky and go in... To, and we can trace a line of communication through Turkey. We can actually be in supply in the Donitz Basin. I should have thought that before. So yeah, uh, effectiveness check. Successful. They're going into Donitz Basin. Here we go. Uh, 3d6 versus 1d6. 5 to 4. It's a success again. And that's another stability test for the Soviets. And it failed that time. They're back to unstable. The British gain another flag. So they actually, uh, oh, uh, they have to go put that in the cup because the one they just got was out of the cup. And yeah, the, this whole intrusive force has been a lightning campaign in the back here causing havoc while the Soviets are obviously in gridlock with the Americans. They can't pull these units back for fear of the Americans uh, pushing through into Germany and just trouncing through here. And, uh, you know, narratively, why isn't this tank unit in Poland coming back to fight them? Uh, there's some unrest among the men. There's some problems with logistics. They're trying to get it, but they're just not as fast as the Americans and British are with their with their trucks. Plus, now, once they got to Ukraine, the whole supply line was disrupted and they had to get everything they had to read. It was just, it was just too too much. All right, out of the cup. It's an American offensive. This is the last American offensive. We have to try to take Berlin. I would love to use the A-bomb. But I don't have any more strategic air units and it's just not going to be effective. Because he's got two air units to absorb it. So even if the Americans get a flag out of the cup later to use the actual attack with, it's just not going to be effective. So we're just going into Berlin. We're just going into Berlin. Or you know what? Bavaria. Or Silesia. Why Berlin? Berlin's got two, but Bavaria and Silesia are much easier to take. Let's hit Silesia with everything with a plus one augmentation. Bavaria we can hit by itself later after the fact. Yeah, sure. Plus one augmentation going into Silesia. That's 2d6 plus one versus 2d6 for the air battle. Six to four means the Soviet air has to retreat. That means the Americans have air superiority and armor superiority here. 3d6 plus one is six to plus uh, versus one is six to three. That's two losses for the Soviets. And they have to take them both because they have nowhere to retreat to. That means the Americans take Silesia. And that means Berlin is now up for grabs. It's looking real bad for the communists now. I don't think they have a way of pulling back out of this. I'm pretty sure they're out of offensives. It was just too many between the Americans and the British. So many offensives the Soviets could not hold once that started happening. And the Americans got really unlucky for a while. The Soviets were just pounding them earlier on, preventing them from getting their armor superiority to, to make a difference. Now, the Americans are going to stay in Silesia. They know that the, the people in, in, in Berlin are now... They, you know what? We're going to use the last attack to go into Berlin. We could go to Bavaria, but we're going to go to Berlin. You know why? Berlin is surrounded. It's got a limited, com a limited uh, supply modifier. And the Americans are going in whole hog. They have no air superiority. Actually, you know what? We know that the, the Soviets would have split their air here because they didn't know what the Americans were going to do in Silesia. They might have gone to Poland. They might have gone to that way. So they send one air back that way. So 2d6 to 2d6. Americans, go. Soviets, go. Soviets lose their air, which actually just retreats to Bavaria just in case. And then it's air superiority only for the Americans, but the Soviets are rolling uh, 2d6 minus 1. So 3d6... 2d6 minus 1, 5 to a 4, only flips over one Soviet army. 
But it does set him up for another attack with an American flag later, if need be. So that's the last American offensive. It did take Silesia. I don't think we accounted for that. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, but then minus three means they should be at three. The Americans appear to be at seven. That appears to be correct there. So if the Americans are at seven and the British are at nine, that means they've got 16 minus eight, means the democracies are actually at eight. So yes, we did not properly uh, move things up there except for the Americans. All right, so now the British can't do anything because I was an American thing, so we got to go to the cup. It's a Soviet tank upgrade. Now, you have to be in supply in order to get the tank upgrade, so that's just going to go over here, I guess. Uh, there are no more other things. Okay, next out of the cup is the final crisis. Does it end the game? Ladies and gentlemen, it does! It ends the game with a democracy victory. The un Operation Unthinkable took place. The Soviets pushed the Americans almost off the off of Europe. One little thing this way or that, they would have lost the toehold in Denmark, and it would have been a lot harder to get back in. Uh, but the British were able to use their launching point from Denmark to get to East Prussia and then just tear through the Soviet backfield. They could not cause the surrender. Given a little bit more time, they did have, let's see, an, a British and an American flag still in there, which could have continued to... to to crush the Soviets. I'm just curious, if one more attack had gone against the Soviets in Berlin, would it have been the triumph they needed? Let's find out. Uh, 2d6 versus 2d6. That's it. Knocks out the Soviet air, gives the Americans air superiority because they had an extra plane. So then we do 3d6 versus 1d6 minus 1. Would this, would this have been the triumph? 5... To one! It would absolutely have been the triumph. So crisis or no crisis, the Americans would have crushed the Soviets there, taken another 2VP, and maybe collapsed the Soviets with that, uh, with that, let's see. It would not have collapsed the Soviets. But it still was a great campaign. I know I made a lot of mistakes. Maybe it affected the outcome, maybe not. It's a solitaire game. I'm playing for fun here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was illuminating for those of you trying to play uh, the game. And this was extremely long <laughs> and very uh, draining after each of these sessions. I probably won't do another one of these anytime in the near future, but maybe I will uh, with another game. I might play another game solitaire so you can see how it plays out. But this one just is filled with so much interesting drama. That's what I like to uh, to play through it, even solitaire. I've been playing it solitaire, I've been playing it on Vassal, I've been playing it on tabletop. It's got so much drama, so much cool stuff happening. The narrative that it creates is great, the tension, the puzzles, choosing where to spend your stuff. I still haven't had a fully satisfactory war in the Pacific yet, but I'm sure that's just because I've been playing a terrible Japan whenever I've been doing it. Uh, I let Tokyo get invaded in like 41. <laughs> I just did such a bad job. <laughs> the Japanese surrendered. It didn't work out well. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Uh, see you later.